There's always been something fascinating about an indie game, which didn't promise huge games centered around huge budgets, but instead delivered niche-based fun with unique gameplay mechanics not typically seen in modern games. In these videos, I will cover a few indie game developers and current games from them which I found interesting and worth mentioning. The purpose of these videos is to spread awareness for developers that I think deserve praise for their hard work by providing a few highlights and reactions from their games. And as always, you will find a link to these games in the description if you want to check them out later. The first game on the list here is going to be a game called Fireflies. I was a bit skeptical when I played the first two minutes of the game, mainly because I personally felt that the character movement was a bit wonky, but the screenshots on the game page looked very beautiful, so I decided to just sort of accept the character movement and continue throughout the rest of the game. The game itself is a puzzle platform, which seems very similar to games like Inside and Limbo, which is probably why I decided to try this game since I quite enjoyed those other games. Story-wise, the game does have a story, but as of this build, you have to read it off the game page, since the game at the moment kind of drops you in the game without an introduction. Mm. It is worth mentioning that Fireflies right now is still in development, which, if I have to be honest, is a bit sensible through the player movement and physics, and because the developer named himself Play Fireflies. Yes, I know. A couple of other technical details like the mouse cursor always being visible on screen and a few hiccups when jumping up platforms are also things I'd like to see addressed in a later build. But looking past these minor issues, the game itself has incredible environments and does a fantastic job of pulling a player into the desired mood for these types of games. If I had to pick a favorite element in Fireflies, it would have to be the 32-bit 3D art style seen throughout the game. And again, if you want to check out this game, there is a link for it in the description of this video here. The next game on my list is called Roll a Die. Roll a Die is a game that seems inspired by roguelike games such as The Binding of Isaac, in the sense that you traverse a dungeon where you need to clear out enemies in order to proceed to the next room. When I started playing this game, I didn't pay much attention to the intro on each playthrough, which made me wonder if there was... Wait, what is that? Which made me wonder if there was any deeper mechanics to the game, since from the looks of things, you just needed to clear out rooms with enemies to win. But being the massive idiot I am from time to time, after failing and dying about 10 times, I finally paid attention and noticed that the intro changed with each death. Okay, wait, hold on. I can do this. To please death, you have to die by water. Okay. So I went back into the game seeking out an enemy that appeared to have something to do with water. So I went into the game to find an enemy that has something to do with void, and... So I went back into the game to find an enemy that has something to do with win. Oh, come on! So yeah, the game does have a few issues here and there with enemies spawning on top of the player when you enter a new room, as well as a few issues with the hitboxes since it seems that you can die by almost touching an enemy. And then there's the thing with the mouse cursor always being visible on screen. Seriously though, what is it with games not removing the mouse cursor from their games? However, these are minor issues I know can be patched fairly easily, so it's not something that might still be there in the future in a later build. After managing to get killed by the correct enemy, I noticed that I gained a new power. The furthest I managed to get in Roller Die was about two rounds of dying correctly, but it makes me wonder if we'll see any special endings once completing a certain number of deaths, or if we manage to clear all the rooms. The reason I picked this game for my list is because it reminds me a lot of my own real attempt to create a game where I tried to create a dungeon crawler type game called The Warlock, which I never got to finish. Check out the link in the description if you want to attempt to complete this game and see what happens at the end. The next game on the list is named No Great Apparel. No Great Apparel is a different type of game. The one thing that caught my eye when looking through the dozens of indie games that I had to choose from was the visual design of this game. It reminds me of another game named Darkwood, which also used similar styles to change the view distance of the player based on where the trees and obstacles are located. I mean, come on, look at those amazing shadows. This means that at any point you don't know if an enemy is hiding right behind that tree, since you can't see them unless they're within the view of your character. It provides a semi-top-down view of a watcher who is tasked to travel to a village and deliver a message that could save the village. On your journey to the village, you're introduced to different mechanics that allow for you to clear your way and slay your enemies. 
I was a bit confused regarding the direction of which a character was facing, which led me to moments like this one, where I needed to open a door by aiming and shooting at two poles, since I didn't know if I was actually facing upwards. And yes, the recharge rate of some of the spells during moments where I had to use the same spell twice felt a bit drawn out while waiting for the next spell to get ready again. If there's one thing I'd like to have seen in the game, it would be a charge meter for the strong attack with the sword, since I have no idea about how long I need to hold down the attack button before my attack changes from one swipe to multiple swipes. But nonetheless, the fights were fun and the boss fight at the end was challenging enough to have me hooked. It's unique games like these that makes me want to choose indie games over AAA games at any point, since you get unique gameplay mechanics that you don't usually see in other games that are made by big companies. No Great Apparel is available as a demo and there's a link to it in the description of this video here. And with these games I would like to end off the video by saying that even though indie games tend to be free, donating a bit is a great option to tell the developers that you love their game. If you're a developer or fan of a particular indie game you would like for me to include into these videos, send me an email with the name of the game and the platform it can be downloaded from to letsindiegame at gmail.com so I can check it out. That's all I had for today so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.